Beware what activities you do in the pursuit of dealing with your boredom. It is very easy to work for a long time at a company, especially a company that's well established, and then you start to get bored. And this is where troubles set in because you can't confuse activity with things that are productive. So sometimes I say to, to clients, are you bored? And they go, bored, I can hardly breathe. That may be true, but the goal for leadership is to make companies perform better and better. And this can get boring if you have to attend to it day in, day out. They start a bunch of new projects or habits and these things become a problem. So here's a couple of examples of where you go off kilter. Um, you decide that, oh, you know what? I'm gonna start a new trade. And maybe you're in plumbing, maybe you're in heating and cooling, whatever that is. And you figure, well, the new trade's gotta be easier than what I already do. The answer is not likely. Now, it may be a smart decision, I'm not saying no. But if you go into a new trade because you're not successful at the trade you're at, that's a problem. You have to learn how to master what you do right now as a trade before you go and pursue another trade. So watch out if boredom is the reason for that. The other thing is you want to add an additional company in a field that's not the thing that you know. You have a friend or relative or neighbor that says, you know, I'm going in the restaurant business. You should come join us. No, you should focus on the things that you know really well. Um, you might want to reconfigure how the staff operates and what they do and where they all sit and what jobs they have. And that too is a problem until you establish an org chart about how your business should run and manuals that cover that. It's a lot easier to move pieces if it needs to be, but if you're just shuffling the deck to mix up the cards, that's not a good reason to do it. You designed you decide that you need to redesign your office space or you decide to buy a new building. Now that may or may not be a smart move depending on what your needs are, but if you're bored and you're just trying to shake things up, that's not a good reason. And it's kind of like retail therapy where it costs you a lot of money and then all of a sudden it feels good. That is until your credit card bill comes. So watch out, what should you do instead? One of the best things you can do is reinvent how you work every day. Um, what I suggest is make a list and you can do it old fashioned paper wise is what is it that you like and love to do? What is it that you hate to do? Uh, and then think about how to make your, somebody else do some of the things you don't like to do, outsource, delegate, and how you can get to do more of the activities that help the company. Sometimes just energizing more, you know, um, training and delegation that makes a big difference. Clean things up in your day-to-day -day approach to work. So make time for yourself, whether you've always promised to get to the gym or just go out to have lunch. If it's not built in your calendar, it's never gonna happen. Redirect the staff on how they and the company can grow in a smart way. So they have a future with you and it serves the customer better. Those are things that you need to do that really make the work that you're doing. I have an idea. Introduce the concept of fun. Have you heard that word? Did it used to exist? Maybe it was when you first started. It's easy because we get down to the serious part of things that we do. And it, if things aren't, money's not rolling and that's not a lot of fun either. You want to make some fun. You want to make some company games. You can do things like scavenger hunts. You can do bowling, fishing. There's a lot of great activities that build teams together. And then it becomes a whole lot more fun. It shakes off the boredom. And if you tie it to a goal and a reward, it's a lot more fun to play. Boredom is a real thing for us contractors. Take my advice and you'll be on a better path.